Liam Lee have now updated their TL and TLL CTU fans making them wireless. Initially the wireless versions are only available in 120mm size but they do come in black and white in standard and reverse blade and as we've mentioned in TL and TL LCD variants. The fans are going to be available from the 20th of December and you're going to be able to get a triple pack of the fans with the required wireless controller for $149.99 if you've got the LCD version or $99.99 with the non-LCD versions. For single packs of the fans it's $29.99 for the non-LCD versions and $46.99 for the LCD versions. It is important to remember to use the single fans you are still going to need the wireless controller. It comes included in a triple pack of fans so if you're getting an additional fan to add on to this this is fine. Alternatively you can pick up a wireless controller for $17.99 or if you already have the SL Uni fans, the wireless versions, the same wireless controller will be able to control these fans as well. In terms of the specs, the airflow, static pressure and noise does vary between the different models so go ahead and pause the video here if you want to take a closer look. So I've gone ahead and opened up a triple pack of the LCD fans so you can see we've got our 1.6 inch LCD display in the middle of the fans and this now supports a frame rate of up to 60 frames per second whereas the older version only supported 30 frames per second. So if you've used Lian Li Uni fans before, a lot of the features should be fairly familiar. So joining them up, you're just going to line the connectors up and push down into place. You can see that these are the reverse blade versions of the fans. We've got a lighting bar that extends round here on the top and a similar one on the bottom. And I lay the fans down on the side, you can see we've got an infinity mirror and the lighting bars continue on the side of the fans as well. In terms of the features, the fans are going to look nice and clean. We've still got the little cover holes for the screws. And you're still going to be able to remove the additional connectors that you don't need. Simply twist them around anti-clockwise and then pull them off. If we take a look at the side and compare it to the old version, we've now got two rows of pins. So to connect up our cable, we're just going to have to line it up with the connectors and then push it up to lock it into place. If you don't want these cables running down the way, we can pull the little cover off and then we can free the cables up, bring them up to the top pass them through the connector and then replace the plastic cover. Coming from the end of the cables we've got a USB cable which you need to plug into a USB 2.0 header on your motherboard and we've also got a PWM cable. Now you can just simply plug this into a fan header on your motherboard or the other option you get with a triple pack of fans you get this SATA connector to 3 PWM connector. So you can simply take your PWM connector and plug it into one of the ports and then plug the other end into a SATA cable coming from your power supply and this will power up to three groups of fans. It is important to mention this only comes in the triple pack of fans. In the triple pack of fans we get this wireless controller, we can pull the end off and all we need to do is plug this into a USB port on the back of our motherboard. If you'd rather not have this sticking out from the back of your PC there is another option. So with the triple pack of fans you also get this cable that you can plug into the other end of the controller and then coming from the other end we've got a PWM cable which we need to plug in again into a system fan header or that 3 to 1 PWM to SATA connector and then we get another USB cable to go into a USB 2.0 header on our motherboard and in the box you're going to get all the screws you need to secure the fans. So I've opened a single pack this time it's the standard blade and it's the non-LCD version and you see we've got this silver medallion in the middle with the Lian Lee logo which I do think is a nice improvement over the previous generation. So because this is a single fan the only thing you're going to get in the box is the screws to secure it as well as the connecting cable. So connecting it up is exactly the same as the LCD version, line it up with the two rows of pins and push up to lock it into place. Now the big advantage of the non-LCD ones is we have only one cable coming from and this is just simply a PWM cable. So you're going to need to plug this into a PWM header on your motherboard and importantly because this is a single pack of fans we don't get that 3 to 1 SATA connector and we also don't get our required wireless controller. So in terms of what we can connect up together for the LCD fans it's a maximum of 3 in a group whereas you can have 4 of the non-LCD fans connected up together. It is possible to mix the LCD and non-LCD fans. If you're going to do this, the maximum number of LCD fans you can have is two and a total of four fans. What is important, if you're going to have even one LCD fan in the group, then you're going to have to use the connector that has the two cables coming from it. So I think a lot of you will be watching this now and going, these fans are clearly not wireless. There's cables coming from them. So some of the fans features are actually wireless but we're going to need to power these fans and there's no way to actually power them without a cable. So this 4 pin PWM cable 
is actually what gets power to the fans and that comes either via your motherboard's header or directly from your power supply using that three to one SATA cable that you get with a triple pack of fans. But if you get the single pack of fans, you're gonna to have to power that using your motherboard's fan header. It's exactly the same on the LCD version of the fan. We're gonna to need to power it and that's what the PWM cable's for. But the difference with this fan is it's also got an LCD screen on it and we can transmit the data to that screen wirelessly. So that's what the USB cable is for. So that goes into a USB 2.0 header on your motherboard and that's gonna control what comes up on your screen. So the bit that is actually wireless is the control of the RGB. So we've got our wireless controller. It communicates over Wi-Fi with the fans, allowing you to adjust the RGB effects on them. So a lot of you may be thinking, what is the point if the only thing that's sent is the RGB signal, but it really does actually simplify the building process. So let's take this as an example. We're gonna have two groups of fans. We'll just have a single fan in each. So we've got one standard fan and one LCD fan. So in terms of connecting all the wires up, we'd simply have two PWM connectors to plug into fan headers on our motherboard. And then we've got one USB cable to go into the motherboard. Then all we'd need to do is plug this into the back of the PC. Okay, so let's take a look at the older versions of the fans. Again, we've got one LCD and one non-LCD fan. So this time we've got one cable coming from each of the fans. They're plugging into our hub. Coming from the hub, then we've got a number of cables. We've still got a USB cable to plug into the motherboard. We've got a PWM and ARGB cable to plug in as well. And this time our hub is gonna to have to get power. We're gonna to need to plug this into a PCIe cable coming from our power supply. So disadvantage with this system is all the cables have to plug into the hub. So you have to position this at the back somewhere where the cables can reach all the different fan locations. You've got more cables to plug in. You're gonna to have to power the hub and you're gonna have a bit more of a mess at the back of the case. Big advantage of this system is there is much less cable clutter. Um, if you're going particularly with these non-LCD fans, you're going to go into a system fan header. So one little tiny cable that doesn't have to come to a central location at the back of the case. Disadvantages are you do have this big adapter sticking out the back of the PC. Although if you prefer to have it hidden away at the back, you can do that. But that's going to mean another USB 2.0 port on your motherboard. And each group of the fans that has an LCD screen in it is also going to need a USB 2.0 port. So you're going very quickly going to run out of USB 2.0 ports. So you might want to consider using one of Lian Lee's Edge power supplies, which actually has a built-in USB 2.0 hub on it. So having built with both systems, the new wireless one is much easier. And I don't think the big advantage of these fans is that you can actually transmit the RGB signal wirelessly. The big advantage for me is the fact that you don't need a hub at the back of the case and have to route all the fans to that hub. Okay, so let's go ahead and install this group of fans. And you can see we've got two LCD fans and two non-LCD fans. So because we've got LCD fans in the group, we are gonna have to use the double cable connector. So we'll take our USB cable and plug it into a USB 2.0 header at the bottom of the motherboard. And we'll plug the PWM cable into a system fan header. Then all we need to do is plug our wireless controller into the back of the PC. So the first thing we're gonna to want to do is download Leon Lee's L Connect 3. So you'll find a link to this in the description and we'll click on download. So we can click on open file. And we'll click yes. And we'll click next and install. And click on close. So we're gonna to have to reboot our PC, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And as we do it, I'm gonna press the delete key to enter the BIOS. So we're gonna head over to adjust our fans. So we take a look at our fans, you'll notice they're spinning up and spinning down, and they are flashing on and off. And this is because they're currently not getting enough power. So what we're gonna to want to do is select the fan header that we've got it plugged into, and we're gonna to want to set it to PWM and full speed. So let's pick PWM and let's click on full speed. And you'll notice that now that we've done that, our fans are no longer flashing, they're staying on, and we've got the Lian Lee logo displayed on the LCD screen. So all we're gonna to need to do is save our settings. So we can click on exit, save changes and reset. And you see what we've done, we've enabled PWM and full speed, and we'll click on okay. So whenever Windows open up, L Connect is going to open automatically. It's advising us we need to update our firmware, so we'll click on Update Now, and click on Download. We're then going to click on Update. Okay, so the update doesn't seem to be working. I think the only thing this update adds is the 60 frames per second for the LCD display, so hopefully I should still be able to show you how things work. So the first thing we're going to do is head over to our Device tab, 
we're going to click on L Wireless Sync and click on OK. We'll click on Wireless Setup. So you can see here that each controller is able to control up to 10 different groups of devices. So if you have more than one group plugged in, you can click the Identify button and your fans will light up yellow, helping you work out which is which. So we're going to bind our device to the controller by clicking here and then click on OK. So it's given us some advice here. We touch the fan blades to set up our fan profile, touch the LCD screen to set it up, and touch the RGB to set up the lighting effects. Okay, so we just need to touch in the bit that we want to set up. We can see over here we've got our 120 millimeter reverse base fans. We can see our current fan speed. We're currently running on Rainbow. So let's do the fan profile first of all. We're currently running on the standard fan profile. So for example, we wanted to adjust this. Let's go for full speed and click apply to all. There's a lot of noise happening in the background and our fan speed is kicking all the way up. So you're probably not gonna do that. Let's go for the quiet profile for now and click apply to all. Okay, next let's take a look at the RGB lighting effects. So you can see we're currently set to rainbow. So we've got the option of controlling all the lighting together or splitting the upper and lower lighting. I'm just gonna keep everything together. And let's go in and show you something different. Let's try runway and click apply. So I think that looks quite good. If we wanted to change the colors up, but let's go for red and we'll paint red in here and let's go for blue and click on apply. So that does look pretty good. Say we wanted just to set the fans up separately. So let's pick the bottom group and let's go for a static color. So let's set the bottom to a static green. So all we need to do is paint this into the fans and click apply to all. So you'll notice at the bottom, we've got static green and we've got runway on the top of the fans. And I'll turn the fan sideways to give you a look at what it looks side on. So you can see this whole side is green. Whereas on this side, we've got the runway effect going. Okay, so let's move over to the LCD screens. Okay, so on the fans, we've got all our usual options. We can have an animation. So let's pick this one for here. Now the only thing this isn't happening currently the right way round, so I'm just gonna prick the rotate icon. We can change the animation that's playing on it. So just click the screen we want to and pick something different. And you'll notice that's changing on our fans. And again, we're just gonna to have to rotate it round as currently upside down. So the animations do look pretty cool. Um, my favorite has always been the sensor panel. So again, it's coming out upside down, so we'll just flip it round. And I want to add a sensor panel to the other one. We can click on it, change it also to a sensor. And again, we're just gonna flip it round to get it the right way up. And let's change it to CPU load. And again, you've got all your options here. I think it was five I quite liked out of the, the last one it is. So it doesn't seem to be saving the orientation, but I imagine when the release version of the software comes out, it will do this. Okay, so that's a quick overview and setup guide for the new TL and TL LCD wireless uni fans. Looking forward to getting these into your build on the channel fairly soon. If you have enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you aren't currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.